Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a single geode shirt. I prep the shirt as usual and I have it turned inside out. The shirt that I'm tying is a 4X, so since it's a little bit larger shirt, I'm going to make a mark where I'd like the center of the geode to be. That way, as I tie the rest of the shirt, I can kind of keep tabs on where that center portion is supposed to be. I'm going to grab that mark that I just made and lift the shirt up off of the table. And what I'm trying to do is start tying at the bottom. So I want to let the shirt kind of fall naturally and then grab my sinew and begin tying the lines from the bottom going out toward that center area. I think it's a little bit easier not to end up with bullseye looking geodes when I start tying from the bottom. So if you look at a slice of geode, there's generally a center portion and then there are rings that go out from that center area of the geode. And on a natural geode, the rings are not an equal distance from each other. So I'm trying to do that same thing with this shirt. I have a center portion that I'm kind of keeping tabs on and then I'm making the rings with a sinew and I'm trying to vary the distance between the rings. I'm making the rings using sinew because it's a wax coated thread or string and when I place the line around the shirt and I pull it really tight, that wax coating will catch or lock down on itself. And when it does that, it forms a barrier that won't allow any of the dye to go underneath that area. So that space or that area underneath the sinew is going to remain white. So that'll give the definition lines for the geode in the shirt. I'm also trying to lift the shirt up periodically off of the table and rough it up just a little bit. And by that I mean I want to make sure it doesn't get too perfect. I want to keep some of the wrinkles and some of the messiness in the shirt. I actually think it looks like a much more natural geode and it gives a much better effect if the shirt isn't too perfect when it's tied. When I get to the end or the center portion of the geode, I'm going to continue messing with it, kind of poking some of the fabric inside and trying to make sure it doesn't end up looking like a bullseye. Then right at the very end portion of the geode, I'm going to take a piece of sinew and go down through the center of the geode, pretty much splitting the geode center into two different smaller centers. I think that'll break up the center portion of the geode and give it an interesting look. I get better color saturation on geodes when they're completely dry on the inside. So I'm going to set the shirt aside and allow it to dry out for a few days. So I'm going to dye this shirt a variety of green shades and like earth tone brown khaki type colors. So when I started pulling colors, I ended up with quite a few. But since this is a larger shirt, I can add a few more colors on the shirt. I've placed the shirt on top of a rack and I'm using my silicone cake molds to make an ice barrier for the shirt. I have a link down in the description for this video for where I purchased the silicone cake molds and lots of other items that I use when I tie dye. I'm placing the cake molds right up next to the side of the shirt and then attaching some wooden clothespins to the rack to hold the cake molds in place. This will not only help keep the ice on the shirt, but it'll also help keep some of the dye from sliding off of the shirt. So to apply the dye to the shirt, I'm going to randomly apply these dye colors to various sections on the shirt. I've lined my dye colors up on top of my rack so you can kind of see which dye color I'm choosing at the time. But the dye colors that I'm using in order 
are Camel from Pro Chemical and Dye, Bright Green and New Emerald Green from Dharma, Khaki from Pro Chemical, Lime Pop from Dharma, Harvest Wheat from Pro Chemical, Forest Green from Dharma, Mocha from Pro Chemical and Dye, Granny Apple from Dharma Trading Company, Safari Gray from Pro Chemical and Dye, and Bright Green from Grateful Dyes. Now I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash over the top of the dye just to make sure that when the ice melts and runs through the shirt, there's still plenty of soda ash left in the shirt to react with the dye. And now I'm going to load on the ice. Over the top of the dye, I'm going to add a color called Ecru from Dharma Trading Company. I think that adding this color over the top of natural color geodes like this adds a little bit of dimension and it fills in any blank spaces that may be in the geodes. Then I'm going to place the shirt aside and allow the ice to melt. After this first layer of ice melted, I went ahead and added a second layer of ice and allowed it to melt as well. Then because this shirt is pretty thick in some areas, I checked the back side and the dye was coming through pretty well, but I still had a little bit of dye left on top. So I went ahead and added a third layer of ice to this shirt. Then after the third layer melted, I allowed the shirt to process for about 24 to 36 hours before I began rinsing. I started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. And then once the soda ash was rinsed out of the shirt, I untied it and gradually warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye. When the water was almost clear, I threw it in my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed it on a hot cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you guys think? I really like the way this shirt turned out. This is what 13 different colors of dye looks like on a shirt. But like I mentioned earlier, because this is a larger shirt, I think it works to put the 13 different colors on there. I think all the colors work really well together. Some of the greens are a little bit more of a blue green, but most of them kind of lean toward the yellow green side. I also like the addition of some of the more earth tone browns into the shirt. I think it breaks up the greens and it doesn't make it just a solid green shirt. I also like the fact that I took the sinew and split that center portion of the geode so that that very center section is split into a couple of different sections. I added several different dye colors into that area and I think it gives it a little bit of added dimension and interest in that one center portion. I also like the way the back of a single geode shirt looks where it just has the lines on the back of the shirt. I've started doing some tie-dyed shirts that are geode shirts that don't really even have a center, just because I really like the way the back of these single geode shirts looked. So overall, I really like the shirt, but when I ironed the shirt just before I took photos of it, I noticed where there were a couple of small holes on one of the sleeves. They must have been there before I started applying the dye but that's really frustrating when that happens, when you end up with a shirt that you really like and find that there are some holes. I went ahead and repaired the holes so you can't really see them in the shirt, but it's still a little bit aggravating. So I really like the shirt, but what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.